Hey guys, I just wanted to share with you of what I've been learning and um, hopefully it'll encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Um, Romans 12:12 12, 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulations, and be constant in prayer. So wow, right in the middle of chapter 12 in Romans, Paul is talking about a true surrender of the heart to Jesus. Throughout that chapter, the resounding message is a frame of mind. What kind of frame of mind that you have? He begins with rejoice in hope. We are to rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus. Jesus says in scripture that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that he will always be with us. And, and so if you stay rooted in the power of Jesus, it keeps you focused on the true joy giver. It's not on our current circumstances or circumstances that may come up. We have to experience the true power of, of God and let it be a reflection in our own lives so we can share it with people around us. Be patient in tribulation. When we walk through the valley of the shadow in those um, dark and difficult moments, Scripture tells us that He is there. He is always with us. He's walking right beside us. He calls us to rely on His power, to patiently rely on His power. Mm. It's natural to question God, to say, hey, what is going on? What, what's happening right now? What did I do to deserve this? But the truth is, it's not about what you do or don't deserve. Mm. It's about, you know, Jesus didn't deserve the cross. It. It's about the power and the purposes of God being revealed by how we patiently endure those situations mm. that we're walking through. Mm. That's true. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Mm. I love that, Kat. Also, Paul tells us to constantly pray. And when we begin to pray and we cease without praying, we begin to surrender whatever that is we're going through. You know, you can begin to feel that release and you know that in that prayer that God is right there with you and that He is carrying you through whatever trial or tribulation you might be going through. These deep waters sometimes that we get into, uh, we feel like that we're just drowning. But when we surrender that problem or that issue or whatever it is in life to God, he begins to take over it. And we begin to feel this, like a freedom comes over us. And we begin to breathe. And we can allow God then to do what He needs to do. And then He gives us His grace and His mercy through that. And then at the end of it, He gets the glory because we've, we've gone through that trial. And I know for myself, when I look back on those trials, I'm thankful for those because He was there with me. And prayer and going to Him every day and just giving it to Him, pray without ceasing. You can never pray enough. And so um, how do we do that? How do, how do we um, change our way of thinking? The Bible says in Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind and that through testing and you may discern the will of God and what is good and what is accepting and what is perfect. And so friends, there's no better man that lived than Jesus. And he suffered great troubles and trials and more than anyone that has ever lived. And he chose it. Let that really sink in. He chose it for you, for me, for everyone. Because of what he did for us, he made a way to the Father. And that because that we have hope of, of things to come and that we can <clears throat> be reunited with, um, with our Heavenly Father who loves us so much. By not conforming to this world, we can look different. And so other people can see uh, Jesus in us and through us. Okay, again, we do this by making sure that we're patient in those difficult situations by daily renewing our minds, um, focusing our hearts and making sure that our hearts are in line with what God's heart is. Renewing our minds means that we're choosing a God attitude over a me attitude. It's a choice, that's a choice we have to make every mm -hmm. single day and sometimes several times a day. 
people will see your attitude by how you behave, you know, and, and your behavior is expressed through how you talk and how you act. So if you're a Christ follower, your behavior speaks volumes about what you think and how you feel about God. That's why it's so important to spend that time daily to make sure that your heart is aligned with God's heart. That is so true, Kat. You know, for me, memorizing scripture helps. Um, and I know that for a lot of people, when you begin to study scripture, they'll, they say, I can't memorize it. It's hard for me to. But when you begin your study with prayer and you just ask the Lord to illuminate that scripture to you, you begin to memorize it and it begins to stick with you at, throughout the day. And I know for me, in times of trouble, when you can go back to a scripture and you can quote that or you can pray that back to the Heavenly Father, you know, um, you begin to feel uh, that uh, sense of calm. And it doesn't matter how deep the water is, it doesn't matter how rocky the boat's getting. When you have that scripture to cling to, it means so much. And over time, you're building that arsenal and you know, this, this word is alive, it's living, and we can use it for our benefit. Uh, in Romans, it says, Romans 15, 4, it says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And you know, when we as followers of Christ, begin to pray that scripture back to Him. And, that, and we can feel the, the Holy Spirit working in us. You know, it gives us that craving, or it does for me, I wanna know more. I wanna dig in your word more, Lord, and I wanna know more about you. And that constant prayer and reading in scripture is gonna, is going to be what anchors you. It's gonna give you that hope to push through. That's good, Kelly. Hey guys, we just want to challenge you um, to memorize Romans 12 too, and let it just really soak into your heart, soak into your minds. And um, we also wanted to, I wanted to give you some questions um, for you to just really meditate in the word and really just grab a hold of that scripture. So the first question is, are you holding on to God's promises or your own purpose for you? Are you trying to cling to your own? Question two, do other people see the re you rejoicing in hope that you received in Christ by the way you are living, the way you're talking, the way you're acting? Question three, what are you learning from the experiences that God has allowed you to have in your life right now? Don't let it be wasted. God has a purpose intertwined with our current situation. And so we'll have those questions also posted for you guys. And I just want you guys just to take this time and... Um, have some time with the Lord and just really reflect on this verse. Thank you guys for joining us today. Bye.